So, welcome to the Speedmaster, the 2022 Gold Line Edition. Let's take you for a walk around and a look at the specs of this bike. Okay, so here is the Speedmaster, the 2022 Gold Line Edition. You can also get this bike in the standard version, which comes either black and white, jet black, or in the really nice red hopper colour. Um, the standard version is priced at 12195 with the Gold Line Edition, which is the silver, ice and sapphire black, which is 12995 So you've got an £800 difference, and that's for the, the Gold Line hand-painted scheme. Now, if you look at the, uh, the tank just here, you've got the hand-painted Gold Line with the black and also the silver ice. And then you've got the black side casings with the, uh, the Gold Line and Speedmaster. Um, it's got a black painted rear mudguard and also a front all metal quality. This bike's brand new. It's only just done about 350 miles and I've got this for about 10 days. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this out and give you our first initial thoughts and then you'll have a second video about 10 days later of our final thoughts and what we actually think of this bike, good and bad. So the engine in this bike, you've got the 1200 parallel twin. This is a 270 degree crank and this is the high torque engine producing 106 newton meters at 4000 rpm so very low down also it produces 76.9 brake horsepower at 6100 rpm it's fuel injected but you've got the uh, the fake carb look just there and then you've got the ignition as you see just there on the side of the engine which is really cool you've got these beautiful stainless steel exhaust pipes on both sides it's chain driven and has a six-speed transmission with a slip and assist clutch which makes the clutch lever really really light and then you've got your radiator just there at the front so it's liquid cooled the bike comes on 16 inch front and rear wheels these are chrome spoked and then on the front you've got a 310 millimeter disc which has abs and also sporting the brembo two piston calipers the front forks uh, 47 millimeter these are the Showa non-adjustable forks you've got the gaiters on the front there and also you've got all LED headlights you've got a daylight running light and also LED indicators moving around to the rear you've got 255 millimeter discs on a Nissan single pot caliper again the beautiful side casings on this bike with the uh, the Triumph emblem really really nicely built on the back you've got a nice grab rail just there for a passenger nice comfy seat and then you can see under the rear seat just there you've got a monoshock this is an rsu monoshock with preload adjustment the weight of this bike comes in at 263 kilograms so it's not light but when you're on it it doesn't feel heavy at all the tank on the bike is 12 liters and this will give you 60.9 miles per gallon which will give you about 190 to 200 mile range seat height is very low uh, it's 705 millimeters so perfect for all riders and then you've got the feet forward position uh, it's kind of unusual position if you've never ridden one before but it's uh, it's a very comfy position especially with this really nice upholstered seat which is super comfy absolutely beautiful like I say, with that grab rail and that rear seat, I reckon this would be a super bike two up. Uh, the bike has 10,000 mile service or 16,000 kilometers. Okay, once on the bike, you'll see that you've got the swept back handle handlebars in chrome. Uh, these take a little bit of getting used to, but I would imagine this is what they were like back in the 60s and all the rage. Um, I much prefer actually myself the straight handlebars that were on the bobber that we had a week ago but actually this is more of a uh, relaxing position it does come with adjustable clutch and also adjustable brake lever on the right hand side you've got two modes on a mode switch which is uh, road and rain you've got your hazard warning lights your start stop and then on this side you've got your lights indicators horn 
you've got your information button for your screen and also a single press cruise control which I really like this setup it really really appeals to me very minimalistic very simple but it has everything you'd ever want on the tank you've got a locking fuel cap and also on the front screen just there you've got a simple speedometer and you've got your tachometer on digital on the little digital display just there and basically you can cycle through different information from trip meters to miles per gallon you've got a fuel gauge a gear indicator and uh, every bit of information you'd ever want again though triumph i wish you wouldn't put this bracket just across here it would be nice to have that missing in the center and just have two separate brackets uh, then you could put a, uh, a phone mount or a sat nav or a beeline little sat nav that i have on my other bike in the center just there but other than that pretty straightforward uh, it's nice to ride it's got the exact same engine as the bobber and uh, in fact it's a lot similar to the bobber other than it's got the uh, different rear seat you do have preload on the rear shock which you don't on the bobber i can't understand why triumph wouldn't put preload adjustment on the the rear of the bobber probably because you can't have a pillion on that bike but uh, yeah really looks nice in this uh, this silver and black uh, it's one of my favorite colors of triumph and i actually wish they'd still did this uh, silver on the Thruxton because uh, I think that was a nicer colour and I think 2020 the end of 220 they stopped doing the silver on the Thruxton I think it would have uh, would have looked nice if they continued that but yeah brand new bike uh, it's uh, quality as I say with all the Triumphs that I've ridden over the uh, the last couple of years they've really really come on and uh, I think you'll also think this looks nice if you're into Speedmasters or a very uh, classic look on this side as you can see the uh, the workmanship of the exhaust the chrome work is beautiful on the engine casings and also you've got your battery box just down here just an all round looking nice machine you've got the chrome mirrors they're quite long stalked mirrors these uh, i much prefer shorter mirrors but uh, you couldn't really have bar end mirrors on the end of uh, the swept back bars on this so I suppose they're in keeping with the uh, the design of the bike. So yeah, Speedmaster Gold Line Series. Uh, is it worth the extra £800 for this awesome paint job? I think so, um, but it's debatable. Uh, some people think it's too much, um, but if you look at other manufacturers out there, they do charge more for just a different paint colour. And it's nice to have the, uh, the other options. So thank you very much, Triumph. Okay, what we're going to do now is get back on the machine and uh, take you for a ride and give you our initial thoughts. Okay, so I hope you like the look of the Speedmaster. I was trying to think what the, uh, the paint scheme reminds me of. And it was a Ford Mustang in Gone in 60 Seconds with Nicolas Cage. And I think the car was called Eleanor. And that was in a, uh, a very similar metallic silver with a black pinstripe not sure it had the gold line on but it is an absolute stunning color now these bikes are actually only going to be produced in the gold line in this color for 2022 so if you're interested in one get yourselves down to a uh, triumph dealer to have a look at one absolutely beautiful in the flesh now let's see how it rides Okay, so the bike does share the same engine as a uh, couple of other Triumphs that are the 1200 and they all have the high torque engine in. So the, the engine is absolutely superb, whether that be round town or on motorways. Like I say, it's got the cruise control, the single press cruise control, so all good there. Uh, the single clock and instrument cluster in front of you is pretty plain and straightforward easy to read 
and also you've got your gear indicator, your fuel gauge, all the information you could ever want. Uh, mirrors, although I didn't like the long stalks on these, uh, they are effective, no vibration at all through the mirrors. And uh, yeah, the only difference from the, uh, the, the bobber is the swept back bars really on the front as you're riding and obviously the seat's a little different. Uh, I would say this seat is a lot more comfier than the bobber. Uh, there's a lot more padding and it's a bit more sculpted. And also you get the pillion or the passenger seat. So uh, differences between the bobber and this, uh, just the bars really, feet forward position on this, whereas they're straight down. And then the, uh, the different rear mudguard arrangement. So it's really nice to see you've got a passenger grab rail on the back of here and uh, yeah just the paint scheme with the chrome beautiful chrome wheels and also chrome pipes and the sound of this thing she really really moves Just instant torque, you know, you've got its maximum torque at 4,000 RPM, so it doesn't matter what gear you're in, the bike just pulls, whether you're in second or sixth, just open the throttle. So you don't need to go up and down the gears too much on this, but uh, yeah, real, real nice sound to it. And uh, as ever, the tunnel. Now you would have thought with the 16 inch front and rear wheels and the tyres that are on this bike that the handling wouldn't be that great but I can tell you as I was surprised on the bobber at just how well that thing handled uh, and this is no different it really really handles well and uh, it's just really light and flickable to say it's over 250 kilos. Triumph really did a, uh, a blinding job on this, the 1200 and the 900 cc engine. And of course you've got the 1200 cc high torque motor from here, also in the Scrambler XC and XE range as well. And uh, when I was down just uh, showing you around on camera on the bike, one of the guys that works at Pine Lake, he actually came over and uh, had a look at the bike and uh, yeah he really liked it. it it certainly gets the looks so the wind blast on the bike is like any other naked bike you've got clean air and a little bit of pressure on your chest just here but other than that it's pretty clean so we'll uh, we'll get some miles on it and then uh, like i say on the the last ride and final thoughts you'll hear our full input on how we got on with this bike all the goods and the bads. Now what I do like about this bike is they've not gone overboard on the chrome. I'm not a huge lover of chrome if you've watched the channel before. Now one of my subscribers was telling me on the bomber video uh, he didn't like the swept back bars on the Speedmaster so he actually put the bobber flat bars on and also he changed the feet forward position to the standard foot peg position. Yeah, I can see where he's coming from at that, because literally it is a bobber, but you can obviously take two on the Speedmaster, and you've got a little bit of space behind you. Pop some luggage on the, uh, the rear seat as well. So I think if this was mine, then I would probably do the same. I would probably put the black bars from the bobber on. Um, not sure whether I would change the feet position, because this is, like I say, super comfy. And actually I found on the bobber because the seat height was so low and uh, with the standard foot positioning my knees were quite bent just the bars really I'm not that keen on the swept back bars and I know they're reminiscent of the uh, the 1960s and all of the bikes back then I would say the only downside to having flat bars straight bars on this and having the feet forward is then you would be lent a little bit little bit more forward not sure if I'm a, a very long ride 
you would get backache with uh, having your back bent a little bit. Now this bike has with the, the bobber, even after just half an hour of riding, I can tell it's a fun bike and I was really surprised. I didn't think I'd like the bobber, um, but I really, really liked it. Not sure it's a bike I would go touring to the south of France on, but for your uh, everyday weekend blast, I think it would be a, a great addition to have in the garage. So we're just heading down to Arnside to park up and get a couple of snaps, a couple of pictures of this bike. A lovely sound from those pipes on the overrun, absolutely gorgeous. Not headed into the Lake District for this ride as the, uh, the bank holiday is upon us and it will be absolutely crammed with people up there and uh, traffic. So we'll stick more local on this ride. Oh. So there's an interesting one. The foot pegs. So we scrape them. Now we didn't do on the bobber. So the, uh, the foot pegs are obviously lower down on, uh, on this bike. And that was one of the things that I was asking, and I'm not sure whether anyone knew, um, was on the bobber. I do remember from years gone by, the foot pegs used to scrape something awful. And the lean angle was very, uh, very small before you touch them down. Now, I didn't expect this to be any different, but I suppose the foot pegs are a little bit more lower and forward, so yeah. This would be the bike that you're going to touch the pegs down if you're uh, leaning it over too far. Now another thing I notice is the suspension wallows a little bit more on this bike than the bobber. The bobber was a little bit more stiffer and uh, I would imagine that's just for uh, comfort really. One niggle that we had on the bobber compared to this was that the, the monoshock under the rear seat on the bobber had no preload adjustment. And on this bike it does. I'm not sure why Triumph wouldn't put preload. Like I said, I think it's just because you can't take a pillion on and why would you need it? But if you've got a really heavy rider, I mean, I'm 95 kilo, six foot two. But if you've got anyone heavier, then you might need to... Uh, get a stiffer rear spring on the bobber. Now I know on my own bike all suspension needs to be pretty much set up if it's adjustable enough. Uh, certainly for preload to set the sag for your weight and I have mine set up by a professional ex-racer mechanic and he does all of that for me. Uh, it really makes a difference. So we're just down by Arnside side here, by the sea. You can see just here the sea is actually in, which makes it uh, really nice. Get a couple of pictures. Noisy car alarm. I didn't set it off. <laughs> Lots of outdoor adventure canoeists and people out and about on boats today. Just awesome. You've got the railway bridge just over there. Okay, so on side by the sea. Now the foot pegs that touch down, they've got these little bars on, so obviously you can wear these down. But that's where they would have sat, or just here, I would imagine. So it's not, not lower, so is this bike lower than the bobber? Probably. I'll need to look at the specs. I'll pop it on screen, the, uh, the height of both bikes just now. Now, tyres on the bike. I mentioned you've got Avon Cobra tyres. These are quite sticky, quite nice. I would imagine they'll be quite good in the wet too. So Arnside, great little place. Nice pie shop in Arnside. And also a great fish and chip shop just down the road here on the right. 
So if you have rubbed this way, always worth a look in. Just at the top of Morecambe Bay, just here. So yeah, so I'm quite impressed, as always, with most Triumphs that are out. Uh, rode about 16 of them so far, and they're all good bikes, really well made. And I also noticed that the, uh, the Hinkley factory will be producing more bikes from now on in the UK, so that's great. They're really ramping things up. Yeah, I would say for small lanes like this, where the road surface is a little bit bumpy and up and down, ugh, the suspension's way too soft for this motorcycle. If you're just plodding about, and uh, it's quite happy to do that all day. So yeah, what we're going to do now is we're going to head off for some refreshments somewhere. And then we're going to head into uh, Lancashire, probably to Trofa Boland and uh, have a nice ride out today on this bike but yeah initial thoughts uh, very good build quality very good and uh, hang on for my uh, final ride after we've had this bike for a while and review that'll be coming up in about 10 days time and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel guys then uh, click that subscribe button ding that bell for future videos coming up and um, we'll catch you on another video soon. Cheers, guys. Take care.